Atlanta's inspiration station, Praise 1025, Dietrich Haddon running. It's the KD Bo Show. All right, y'all, I told you she was coming. She is in the <laughs> studio with me right now. Hey. Real Talk Kim, what's up, real? What's up, KD Bo? You good? Uh, yes, right, I'm just, awesome. Let's just get this out of the way. When you first met me, just tell everybody what you said. Man, he walked by me in the hall, and y'all know me. I ain't got no muffle. <laughs> I looked at him, I said, no! I have been listening to you for all these years, and I thought you were like, so, like your uncle. Like He's this young, good-looking, Chocolate man, How about that? and I thought you were gonna be old. I was like, no way, man, because of his voice is so mature. I know everybody says that. So uh, listen, we're, uh, the the preachers of Atlanta. Yes, you're one of the preachers of Atlanta. Yes, sir. Uh, how has that experience been? Because you know, a lot of times when we talk about reality TV, it could be a mess. Yes. But are you caught up in some mess, some drama in this? Or you know, no? God has given me the a gift of being very direct but caring. I love it. And I have a way that God flows through me to float. So I'm a floater on the show, and I'm always the one kind of mothering people back into, you know, the reality of we are in this to love people back to life. Mm. And, and you know, the thing I loved about the show, Katie Boat, is this show is not about the material things. This is about allowing you in pastors' homes that have real lives, real issues, and we're getting through them. And so, man, I've, I've, been, I've been honored to be on the show. Why, I really have. Why do, why do you believe that with women particularly... You resonate so well. White women, Asian women, black women, why? I think because I know I really love them. Like, I have millions of people all over the world following me, and they feel like they're my BFF. Like, I am relatable. I'm relatable. I'm touchable. Um, I, I see little pit. God's giving me a, a vision. I can see their little thumbnails, and I remember their faces. And when they stand in line to hug on me at these wow. meetings, they know I love them. Like, I fight for my friends. Wow. All my social media friends, I fight. I war in the spirit. I'm there. And I think people want to hear truth. And I'm real talk, Kim, for a reason. I don't cut corners. I don't sugarcoat it. We just lay it out there. Look, Jesus didn't die on the cross for you to be a side chick. Come and on. Then if you go under those p comments on Instagram, you'll see, oh, that's me, Pastor Kim. <laughs> pray for me. It's, I give people permission to mess up, but get up. I love it. In the studio with Real Talk Kim. So, uh, as you are pastoring this church, you just said that you love people. There was a time yes. in which you really didn't care for people at all. Tell me about that a little Well, bit. I was raised in a preacher's home, and most preacher's kids, if we would take a poll, most preacher's kids have a hard time with church okay. because we have watched our parents give their whole entire life Missing games, missing our games, missing school programs for saints in the church. They're there for all your deaths in your family. They're there for your weddings. They're there for your children that get put in jail. And then when you preach the wrong sermon that they don't like, they get up and walk out. Wow. by Felicia. Wow. And so I just didn't, I just, I had such a hard time thinking people were really true. People that really had my back, die hard loyals. And I did not think that it was in the church. And so I had a hard time with it. But when God called me and my husband to preach, we took over my mom and dad's church okay. in Fayetteville, Georgia. We passed our Church of the Harvest, Fayette. South Jerusalem. Yes, it's, it's far, but it's worth the drive, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And when he called us, I, I'm, a, I'm an evangelist. I'm gone every weekend, Katie Bo. I fly on Thursdays, and I'm gone till Saturdays by flying from my church on Sunday. Wow. I go evangelize. When I'm, I'm evangelizing, I'm like, come on, girl, pick up those big girl panties, and let's get through this divorce. <laughs> but when you pastor, you got to be more gentle. you got to okay. be more loving. Okay. So I spent the first few months laying hands on myself, prophesying my, to myself and telling myself, God, I know you called me to be a pastor and let me know how mm -hmm. to differentiate between evangelism and pastoring. I got it, man. I, I got it. this. Real Good Talk God. Kim is in the studio. And man, if you want to reach out, we'll take a couple of calls right now. 404-741-1025. You want to talk to Real Talk Kim. And we're going to give you an opportunity to come and be a part of the behind yes. the scenes, private uh, screening yes. of the Preachers of Atlanta. Yep, the premiere. Oh, the, 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 right, the premiere. Yep. of Preachers of Atlanta. So uh, we'll take some of those calls next in the studio. Real Talk Kim on Praise. I got to ask you this. You're on the Preachers of Atlanta. Uh, so when you see yourself on television, I mean, like, what do you think? You know what, Katie Bo? I think it's so wait, crazy. Wait, wait, wait. Say my name. I, I like how you say my name. Katie Bo. Katie Bo. <laughs> I, it's crazy because now I'm seeing myself everywhere because wow. Oxygen is doing such a great thing, a great of uh, uh, marketing us. But I think God set me up for this because I don't feel nothing. Like, I don't feel bad. I, I'm more excited about knowing more people are going to get to see Jesus through me. Wow. Like, 
I don't even care about the red carpets. I don't care about cameras. I don't care about, I mean, I've had people run up in the airports to me forever taking pictures of me. And I'm like, just as excited to see, I'm such a fangirl of my <laughs> followers. And so I think God prepared me for this. So did you want lights? The lights no. camera? Actually, never? I don't even know how they got my number. No, I never went after it. I never, ever wow. wanted anything. I didn't except to love people back to life. And God, trust me. That's it. He trusts me. I want to open up the lines to have some people come by, 404-741-1025. But I'm going to ask you this. Uh, you are definitely a unique personality. Uh, and then coming from the Pentecostal uh, faith or religion, as it were, um, that's a very kind of traditional kind of way. How did you become okay with you? Man, I thank God. I put a do not disturb up on my heart after my divorce. What does that mean? Do not disturb meant, God, I'm not going to allow myself to go looking for another man because we as a culture of women are taught that we need men. You know, we need men to be able to buy houses, to get our careers going. And I was that type of person. I always thought a man validated me as a woman. Wow. I put a do not disturb, which meant, God, I'm going to, I want you to, I, I'm not going to lay hands on myself, Katie Bo. God put spiritual eye, uh, spiritual blinders over my eyes, muffles over my ears. Keep me center focused. I mean, I pray specific. And I said, I will not allow a man into my world at any level. I don't care if he is like the most hunka hubba 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 thing on the planet. <laughs> right. I am so going to be sold out to you and I'm going to learn. I'm going to start preparing for what I'm praying for. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to learn how to preach. I'm going to learn how to pray, prophesy. I'm going to learn how to lead. And whenever you open that door, I'm going to be ready. When it's time for my husband, drop him from the sky. Wow. He did just that. Six years later, I met my husband, and this man that God brought into my life is named Mark Pothier. He loves me so, you know when the Bible says, love your wife as Christ loves the church. This man, I understand why a man is important in a woman's life. This man loves me into submission. He loves me so right that if I walk out with purple in my hair, combat boots, and a tutu on, he's like, baby, you're so beautiful. <laughs> man, you're so beautiful. So I know that I can go be all that God wants me to be because I always got one person that is the president of my fan club, Mike Skate and not my duty and that's he, he gives me permission to fly talk to that girl that woman that's listening that has made some bad mistakes all right she's had the wrong guy come in and now he's gone you know has messed her up and she's got nothing but carnage left talk to her and speak some life directly to her i know you got to go but I, I i just need you to talk to that person because believe me they're listening right Amen. now baby girl listen let me just tell you something you are a queen I messed up so many times and I started all the way back to when I was 18 years old and I started moving and rebe rebelling. I was raised in a religion where they said women couldn't preach and we were supposed to get married and just have babies and we're supposed to be able to cook so well and all these things and I was none of that and I felt like the biggest loser, the biggest failure. Got married when I was 18 years old, ended up getting divorced. If I passed the dude on the street today, I wouldn't even know who he was and I married him. By the time I got done with that relationship, which was only like six months later, I jumped back into to another relationship. Man, I was raised in a religion that says, if you get divorced, you're going through hell on a slip and slide. I'm proof to you today. It doesn't matter. I did drugs. I twerked on the bar. I knew how to nay nay and not pray pray. I did all of the things that the church says are off. They, it, it, makes, it takes you out of the game of life, of ministry, of being loved appropriately by somebody. But I'm here to tell you, if you get better and not bitter, if you allow yourself to pick yourself up and realize the harder you fall, the higher you bounce, baby, Maybe you got life college that you could not even get in seminary. You couldn't even go to seminary. You couldn't even go to Bible school and get what you're going to get when you've walked through this mess. God has purpose. You've been in a caterpillar state, but baby, you're about to come out like a butterfly. The more pressure that you've been through, the more crushing you've been through, the more beautiful you are going to be, the more bright, the more eccentric, and the more in love with yourself that you're going to be, and God is going to be able to use you. So today, whatever you're staring at, let go of that ex. Let go of anybody that walked out on you, because if they walked out that on you, your destiny is never tied to that. Even if your big mouth ran them off, still get better and watch God bring you the greatest gift of your life, which is called purpose, destiny, and a man of God that's going to love your lights out and be your escape and not your duty. I love you and I I'm praying it. for you. I love it. Real talk, Kim. You want to go and see her tomorrow at the premiere? Give me a call right now, 404-741-1025. I'm going to pick a couple of uh, listeners to be able to go. Kim, I love you. And I, I love thank you for you, stopping man. by. You are amazing. Thank you rock. You. And I appreciate you for thank coming. You. Okay. Thank you for doing the work of the Lord. Preachers man. of Atlanta. Preachers of Atlanta. When is it, when is it uh, preview? Uh, February premiere. the 3rd at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Oxygen. But 
I will be on Dr. Oz tomorrow on ABC wow. at 3 o'clock, and then I'll be on Nightline, NBC Nightline, tomorrow night at midnight on NBC. That's some good stuff. Yes. Real Talk Kim, ladies and gentlemen, on Praise 1025.